pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, John Jack, our topic for this morning is Sunday school is dimensions of sin. Dimensions of sin. Dimensions of sin. And our the Sunday school this morning. The topic is dimensions of sin. And our memory verse is taken from 1 John 5 and verse 17. 1 John 5, 4, verse 17. The Bible says, All unrighteousness is sin, and there is no sin, there is a sin not unto death. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. Someone was talking the other day and they asked me, What is sin? So the Bible now is saying, all unrighteousness is sin. In my mind, I'm asking myself, unrighteousness and sin, which one is easier? Which one is a smaller word? For me to say all unrighteousness is sin, how would I use a big word like that to describe three letter word? What does unrighteousness mean? Who cares? Who, who wants to help us? What does it mean to be unrighteous? What does unrighteousness mean? Unrighteousness. Unrighteous. See that act is unrighteous. Right. Men of God say not knowing God. Not yeah. being righteous. Not being righteous. Or <laughs> <laughs> what does righteous mean? Righteous. <laughs> Let me write with God. Uh, righteous. Righteous. Okay, that's the righteous key for the word right. So anything that is not right is not righteous. Or anything so anything that is not right is not right is not righteous is not righteousness. So can I say? Right, I cannot define right as something being right. So, can I say righteousness as doing the right thing? Yeah. yeah. Yes. What's the requirement for doing the right thing? Have you noticed that to one group of people they say, "Oh, beating children bad," another group of people say, "Beating children wrong." Which one right? Which one right? What's what's? How do we define what is right or wrong? Who wants to help me? So, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, you know, there's no societal norm. Yes. So in, in, in this uh, context, when I talk about it, what is right according to the Bible? All right. So. That's the exact one I want. So for me to tell what is right and what is wrong, I'm not using societal norms. I'm not using what is acceptable in a society. I'm using what is said by the Bible. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. So righteousness now is doing what, if you do what the Bible says is right, you are righteous. If you do not do what the Bible says right, you are unrighteous. So 1 John 5, 17, the Bible says, All righteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. I will, let's look at that introduction. Well, let's read the Bible passage first. 1 John 1, verse 7 to 9. 1 John is before Revelation. 1 John is just before Revelation. You have Revelation and you have Jude. Revelation is the last book of the Bible. You come back one step, you see Jude, then you come back one step, you see 3rd John, you see 2nd John, you see 1st John. 1st John chapter 1 and verse 7 to 9. 1st John chapter 1 and verse 7 to 9. But if we walk in the light, you let it? Yeah. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ his son brings us from all sins. Amen. Yeah. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Nine, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to clean us from all unrighteousness. What did you notice from there? Did you notice anything there? What caught your attention as we were reading that three verses? Unrighteousness. Unrighteousness. What did they say about unrighteousness that really caught your attention? Pretending to be holy and not holy. Pretending to be holy and not holy. Yeah, yeah. Not holy. Yeah, but you're not holy. Yeah, but you're not holy. Yeah. It's a bad thing. What else did you notice from there? Confession of sins. Confession of sins? Who's supposed to confess their sin? If you do righteous, if you do, if you, if we get somebody, you know, setting prayer, yeah, for example, everybody in this room, they are all pastors. And I say, let us confess our sin. It will be so hard for you to say that pastor didn't confess their sin. Because it's expected that pastor is always be 
when they, no matter how you get on, you say, oh, you not, you claim you cannot even make any mistake when you're confessing your sin, you're living in error. He said, if anybody said they get into that point where they can't make a mistake, that person's a liar. Praise the name of the Lord. If anybody get to a point where they say they cannot make a mistake, that person's a liar. For in case we make a mistake, that's in sin. That's doing what is against the Bible. In case somebody make a mistake, what is required? What did the Bible say? She said we should confess our sin. Praise the name of the Lord. Can a person live without committing sin? Is it possible? Is it possible? You know, this is this is a complex part, but look at it like this. What is God expecting of us to do? To live right, not to commit sin. But he's saying, what God says you should live right, but not commit sin, but there's a tendency for you to make mistakes. If you make mistake, you will ask for forgiveness. Is it possible for somebody not to, to live a life without making mistake? It's possible if you choose to. Go out with you and stick to you. I will try my best. Even if I may say, what am I supposed to do? Ask for something. So, so this brother, I want to ask the question. Is temptation a sin? When you fall, when the person fall into it, that way it becomes a sin. Yes. When the person fall into it, then it becomes a sin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Temptation can come, but you don't eat it. Temptation can come, but you don't eat it. So, they say that temptation will come, yeah, they will come. They say that we say, oh, because they will come, so I will keep asking for forgiveness. Paul said, shall, shall, we continue in, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He said, God forbid. Is it possible for you to live one hour without committing sin? One hour without committing sin? It's very possible. It's very possible. Can you go two hours without committing sin? Can you go one hour without committing sin? If you choose to go more, you can go. <laughs> That's your choice, you know? So if you can go one hour, it means you can go two. It means you can go six hours. It means you can go one day. What if? What if you were married to someone who said, I will not do anything wrong. I will do everything right, 100% right. How would that relationship be like? How do you think that relationship would look like? Boring? <laughs> we alright. Look at the other way of it. Somebody say, alright. I'm married. But I will be getting drunk. I will be having girlfriend here and there, there and there. How would that marriage look like? I don't want you to go. You want 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 to go. I don't want you to go. I want go. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't want you to go. I want go. You have lots of fights. Too much action. Do you know the Bible say there's one thing that makes Christianity fine? In Christianity, we don't we don't lift ourselves above others. If maybe. Christianity, you know, like Jesus now, I think Jesus came and said, Do you know Jesus and disciple? The people couldn't tell which who they're different because he and disciple were all through all of them they stayed together equally. They interact equally. They didn't say that, that Jesus here, Jesus, I only see Jesus, they buy down with Jesus. The Bible says, We ought to, we ought to, how did they put it on, on that was Bible study on Sunday? On, they said, We should exalt all the above ourselves, Bible study on Tuesday. Is that what they said? They said we should exalt other above ourselves. So if I'm genuinely a Christian and I'm still taking and I'm putting you higher than myself, and I'm putting you first, and I'm trying to make you happy, and I'm doing everything right, how do you think that relationship will go? It will be heavy on earth. Praise the name of the Lord. So if the person chooses, I will do God's business, I will do it right, everything will go well. We get uh, when 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 you when you deal with that money, it can't be the discussion. Praise the name of the Lord. Where you were last night, it can't be the discussion. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So we said, all oh, on oh, anything that is not done right, sin. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Anything that is not done right, 
They say same came from the, if you look at the introduction, I'm reading for the introduction, I'll read it, the whole introduction, somebody will tell me what they can take from there. Sin connotes evil and lawlessness. I'm reading from that thing called introduction. Sin connotes evil and lawlessness. It is derived from the Greek word hamashia, which means to miss the mark. It can also refer to doing something against God and a person. It is doing the opposite of what is godly. It is failing to do something you know is right. Since the Bible says all oh, righteousness is sin, we shall attempt to unravel some of the form of sin, some of the form sin take as well as its consequences and remedy. What did you what caught your attention there? What caught your attention there? We must do the right thing. So I like how they describe sin. Sin came from the Greek word Hamasha to miss the mark. Meaning there is a there's something right that God, there's something God is expecting us to do. Every time we don't do that right thing, we are missing the mark. If we don't do that right thing, any other thing around it is unrighteousness. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. God will help us in Jesus' name. We say there are two outlines, form of sin, forms of sin, and the second outline is consequences and remedy for sin. So it's all like three things. We're talking about forms of sin, we're talking about consequences, and we're talking about remedy of sin. I have trespass, transgression, iniquity, reprobacy, apostasy. Who do you want to read one of your examine by? It? I won't break that into one, two, three, four, five. Who won't take one, one of them there? I'll be, I'll read it. I'll, I'm coming to read the whole thing. And you take the one that you think you're okay with. You tell us about it. You just give us a summary, short summary. One minute or one minute and a half summary. Trespass. Is a form of sin that occur when we cross a line we ought not to and do that which annoy or inconveniences other people. To be it could be intentional or unintentional. It occurs as a result of our sinful nature and tendency to self. We cross this line in thoughts, in words, in or attitude many times a day, and we should be quick to forgive others who do sin. Amen. Pastor Bella, taking the first one. I found what our pastor just read. Trust by something. Let, let put it in. Let me look at the illustration there. The second one. My God. Well, my God, there in house. Or maybe in the yard. Or maybe the Pharisee yeah. there. He put a sample there that nobody should pass in the sand. It means you cross in that particular land. If you cross that particular land, some kind of action will be taken against you. We can do it even in words. There are certain words you need not to mention to your friends. Because it's against God's law. Amen. Like maybe you, you say things that you're not supposed to say, rule it, you know, all that kind of thing. stuff. So we will always learn to stick to our words should be ceasing. We should speak with, I mean, words that from God. So we are approaching each other one, not by pushing, but even the one with best. But sometimes in our marriages or in our, in our friendship, we say things to our husband or our wife. We don't even to say it because we are one family. Amen. So if you go across the land beyond God, things, God says, don't pass the land. God says, don't do these things. But you stay here, then God will do it. Amen. It's a saying. Anything outside God, God, it's a saying. So you say that cross the land. Pastor Bella then summarizing it as anything that is not hurting another person. To be genuinely Christian, I can't look at somebody hurting. I still look at you hurting. Then you just I just pretend I say everything all right. Then that Christianity. Praise the name of the Lord. This Christianity is supposed to show in the way we do things. It's supposed to show in the way we act. It's supposed to show in everything. You know, there are some things that I'll say, this meeting that we're meeting here is not a society hall, it's not a club. 
It's a social, it's not a social club. Where we come, we chill together, we have fun. This is our chair, this is our group, baby. We have to make it look good. We have to make it back. No. We come in together so we can encourage ourselves so that we can change in the way we do things in our personal lives. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Then I uh, uh, hear now, I say, Pastor, then uh, somebody crying on my knee on the other side. They are said, they doing church. No, I lie. If I was that, can you say you love God? When your neighbor next to you, you are hurting the person feeling, you still say you love God. He said, I'm not Christian anymore. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. And you know, Paul said, that Paul that John, he said, if anybody said they do not have sin, that person is a liar. But when you notice that, oh, the thing that they have been doing, they have been hurting so hard of somebody. When you hear it like that in church, the reason we gather like this, then we go back and make some adjustments. Are we criticizing or condemning anybody? No. In fact, I trust God that nobody even hurting another person feeling. But I say I'm not hurting anybody feeling. If I hurt anybody feeling in the past, you, did you notice the last piece here? The last thing they say, if we have many people, we do that many times a day. But if we do it, then we have to ask for forgiveness. So, and we have to be quick to forgive people that hurt us too. Praise the name of the Lord. In high school, let me deviate a little bit. In high school, I used to be very noisy and troublesome in class. <laughs> so when I graduated from high school, <laughs> they are both teach. The same thing I used to do, I said in the beginning, started doing to me. <laughs> so how can we get better? So now I get better than I look at it for long. I said, I did that thing too. I forgive you. <laughs> in light of what? <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. God will help us in Jesus' name. The next one is transgression. Transgression, I'll read transgression. And somebody else will explain it to us. Transgression, transgression refers to presumptuous sin. It means to intentionally choose to disobey. It can be called willful trespass. Something intentionally break the Nazareth vow when he deliberately disobey public laws. When he deliberately disobey public laws, tell a lie, or blatantly disregard an authority, we are transgressing. Praise the Lord. Who wants to tell me I've talked about that? Just more minutes of transgression. Amen. Amen. Excuse me. I think I believe transgression is clean itself. Everything that you read is a spring inside the world. Transgression is to just summarize it is talk about seeing that thing that you do that you know that is wrong and you do it you know that it's wrong and you do it as, as a christian it's not only limited to the uh, church but even outside there just look at the red light go through it it's, 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 it's sin look at the stop sign go through it it's sin you know disobeying authority doing things that is wrong that we know that we're not supposed to do Praise the Lord. Amen. I was rushing this morning. I wanted to park on the other side of the road. After I finished reading this thing very early this morning, you know, there's, <laughs> I'm driving so back on the side. But I want to park on the other side so I can run to somebody else quickly and come outside. Because I didn't want to spend long time with him because I didn't want to be in church. So by the time I was about to go, the thing that came to my mind. Transgression, you know this. When you still want to do it, I'm so sure what happened to the other side. Praise the name of the Lord. So what they're saying is, for somebody deliberately, you know it's wrong, but you keep doing it. Like take for example, after we feeling here now, the Holy when you want, by the time you tell it that the Holy Spirit reminds you, say that thing I right. When you do something that is wrong, then the Holy Spirit reminds you. Then you look at it for the Holy Spirit relax when I coming back. And let me just finish the one I'm doing. Then that one is become transgression. You know that is wrong, but you still doing it. The next one is iniquity. Iniquity, I will read it. We we'll read it together. There's someone that can just give us a quick summary. One minute, less than one minute or less. Iniquity is a sin that becomes so consuming that a person can be identified by that lifestyle. It means guilt worthy of punishment. It is a sin. At its worst, because it is predetermined, premeditated, continuing and escalating. David was born in iniquity. That Bible verse said David 
David first saw the woman, he was obsessed. He saw the woman, the woman was taken back. He didn't just think about it immediately. He went by, told the woman to come. The woman came. Maybe the woman went by. Maybe she came a couple of times before we found her she got pregnant. We know how many times she came when she got pregnant. When she got pregnant, it didn't end there. He had to kill the man, the woman was for so he didn't get scored. So it's something he lived in. Who wants to tell us about iniquity? So you know, and you as a believer, or as a Christian, you know that stealing is not right. You identify with yeah. 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 so something. David, he made a statement. He said something. David knew that this particular woman they were looking at was not one of his soldier wife. But he did it intentionally. And so he was identified at that particular woman. The Bible keep talking about it, that David did wrong something. Amen. Amen. He didn't stop there. He sent a man on the phone. And then died there because he wanted to. And he kind of thing that God can take serious action against him. Amen. 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 Right, my name, you want to say something? Yeah, I just want to add that if you are drunk and if you commit it, you go see you and say, I don't know what it's going to be. You identify by that. It's an attitude. Yeah, that's all I want to say. Reprobacy, number four. When the man continues in his abomination, until repentance becomes difficult, he is a reprobate. In other words, it is a progression in sin in which the sinner no longer has the desire or ability to repent. It is to be thoroughly deprived, giving, other, giving over to evil until the conscience is smeared and giving to natural affliction, affection. Praise the name of the Lord. Look at this one like this. I'll just talk about this one quick, then we, I'll read the next one. Look at this one like this. Do you know, after a while, when somebody comes, maybe you come to America and you live, and you stay, yes. you used to go to church in Africa, you know that going to church is something you need to do. After you don't go to church the first time, you feel guilty. The second time when you go to church, you feel guilty. After you keep staying away for some time, that guilty conscience will go away. Praise the name of the Lord. It becomes a normal thing, it just becomes a normal thing. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. And the first time you know that all to lie is not good. You know that to lie is not good. But because the first time maybe you did it, you feel guilty and you ignore the guilt. If you keep ignoring the guilt, you will get to that, the person will get to that point of being a reprobate. Where your conscience will be dead. You just see it as a way of life. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. One of the things that if you decide to send a conscious to evil, it will lead you, it will never lead you to good things. It will always be telling you to do evil all the time. Amen. Amen. Who wants to add something to that before I move on? Let me read up. Apostasy. It's derived from the Greek word, Greek word I'm reading number five. Apostasy is derived from the Greek word apostia means which means a defiance of an established system or authority. It is an abandonment or breach of faith. It is expressed as either a falling, falling away from key and true doctrines of the Bible or heretical teaching 
or a complete renunciation of the church faith, which results into abandonment of Christ. That apostasy is deep. It's a part where, like if, for example, that every one of us know that Jesus is Lord. Then all of a sudden, maybe one group come and they start giving all money. They will say, we call it giving all money. They will say, Jesus Christ of this, of this, of this, of this. They say, all the things that we used to believe before, they're not even true again. We change it. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. There's one group that said they buy all that complete. They say there one other man called Joseph Smith. They say Joseph Smith, they bow. And the Bible says, how you buy the Bible today? The Bible says this Bible that is first Timothy 3 16 that says, All scriptures were inspired by God and they were given for doctrine, is what profitable for reproach, for this, for that. Then they get one group now. They say this Bible is not complete. Yeah. That because it's not complete, it's not hundred percent correct. So God gave prophecy to one other man, so the man can bring one book to make the Bible complete. You heard that before? You hear it? Yeah. Anybody heard it before? Yeah. Do you know that's the basis for which there's this church called Jesus Christ of Latter Day Sin? The Jesus Christ of Latter Day Sin. That's the basis of the church. They get one man called Joseph Smith, who God, he said God gave him revelation that he came to a power that you are not complete, you are not perfect. So God gave him revelation, the correction in the Bible. So he get one book that is the correction in the Bible. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. At this stage, eh, there's a, the last book of the Bible. Look at the last, look at Revelation. The last chapter in Revelation, the last, last chapter, the last verse. Revelation chapter 22, verse 18. The last, the last Revelation 22, the last chapter, the last verse. No. But, but I want to read seven. I want to read eighteen. <clears throat> Starting for eighteen. I warn everyone who hears the word. From this school. If anyone has anything to learn, draw with heart to that person, and too late to describe it in this world. And, and if anyone takes word worse away from this school or the one prophecy, God will take away from the person any share in the tree of life and in the only witnesses which are described in this school. All right. The one they added to the Bible. Is it from God? No. And it, when the re no revelation was God, it was God we were saying, I'm ending the Bible here. It was God we were saying, I'm ending the Bible here. Nobody should add anything again. I finish. No one should take anything away. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Are we supposed to add anything? Then apostasy now is that point where you are moving from what you believe to something else. The Bible describes it as apostasy. It's a terrible sin. And Hebrews chapter 6, look at Hebrews chapter 6 and verse Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 4 to 6. Hebrews chapter 4, 6 and verse 4 to 6. The Bible says it's impossible for those who were once enlightened. Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 4 to 6. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 4 to 6. Hebrews, Hebrews is the word of the Old Testament. It's in the New Testament. You have 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, Hebrews, James. 
We have First Timothy, Second Timothy, Titus, Hebrews, James, Hebrews chapter six and verse four to six. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened, who have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and have tasted the good word of God and powers of the world to, to come, if they fall away. To renew them unto repentance. It is impossible for those who tasted the word of God to enjoy it. If they fall away, it is impossible to bring them back to repentance. That scripture is, is a hard one. But that scripture reminds us that people can backslide. And people can get to the level where God can take them by the Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So anything we do, regardless of how it looks like, I choose in this life not to interpret God by how I feel. The way by the God say in the word of God that what I want to see. Praise the name of the Lord. In one minute, let's look at the second outline, consequences of a remedy for sin. What are the consequences of sin? I will just read through this. The number one, the ultimate and severest consequence of sin is death. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. Number two, sin leads to re regression. That Proverbs 14, 35, he said, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Anybody that lives in sin, it's as if you are bringing yourself down. You cannot be the, at the point at which you ought to be in this life. Praise the name of the Lord. Number three, sin brings fellowship and eventually lack of spiritual growth. So when the person keeps sinning, the person will be breaking their fellowship with God. Hallelujah. Number four, sin is harmful to others. Sin will not only affect you, it will affect the people around you. Praise the name of the Lord. Sin can bring severe discipline, which can sometimes lead to death when a heart is added to the point of no return. The person, the sin by itself can lead to death directly sometimes. Sin can escape a man that brings about more sins if not checked on time. What's the remedy? God remedy for sin. First John 1 7. If you say you don't have no sin, you lie to yourself. But when you if you part paraventure you may mistake, ask God so he can forgive you. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The death of Jesus on the cross was sufficient to pardon all our sins. Whenever but in that Romans 9, the Bible says that death of Jesus was for the sin of the past. So after that sin of the past that God has forgiven through the Death of Jesus. Anything we're doing now, we should ask God for forgiveness. Praise the name of the Lord. Whenever we accept substitution He made on the cross by confessing our sin, repenting and believing the sacrifice He made on our behalf, God sees us as righteous. Our sin are pardoned, and we are no longer considered guilty and deserving of punishment. The only sin that God cannot forgive is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, which is the final rejection. Sin is whatever dimension of destruction yes. or alpha. Conclusion, sin is whatever dimension of destruction, no matter how far you fall from the name of sin. Praise the name of the Lord. Shall we just stand to our feet? Let's just lift our voices to heaven and say, Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We worship you. Thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for your word this morning. Thank you because we know your word will cause a change in every heart. Thank you because we know your word will cause a change in every heart. We give you praise. We give you glory. For in Jesus' name we pray. Let's commit this service into God. Let's say, Father, please come and take control. We invite you here this morning. We invite your presence. Holy Spirit of God, we invite your presence. We invite your presence. We invite your presence. Father, touch lives today. Come and touch lives today. Father, come and touch destinies today. In the name of Jesus, my Father, my God, come and touch destinies today. In the name of Jesus, use every aspect of this service to touch the life of your people. Use every aspect of this service to touch the life of your people. My Father, my God, touch the two destinies for better today. In the name of Jesus, have your way, my Father. Have your way, my Maker. In Jesus' name we pray. We are going to ask God. He said, The eyes of God, they are too holy to behold sin. Meaning, if a person is not, if there's a sin in a person's life, when God is looking for who to bless, God eyes will pass over that person. 
Lord, make me worthy of your presence. In every way I've sinned against you, please be merciful to me. My Father, my God, I pray for mercy this morning. Daddy, I pray for mercy this morning. My King and my Maker, I pray for mercy this morning. I pray mercy in the name of Jesus. 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 There's one thing I, one of, one of the things I try not to let let go of is the fact that I came to meet with God. By the grace of God, I happen to be a pastor. I'm so concerned about people coming to church. I'm so concerned about people, things being done right. But one of the things I don't want to ever forget that I came personally to meet with God. Tell God this morning, I don't want anything to come between me and meeting with you. I don't want anything to come between me and meeting with you. I want this to be a meeting between you and myself. Although there are other things that my that my that my don't have to be required of me. But Lord, my friend, my I want to meet with you this morning. I want to meet with you. Don't let anything come between that. Don't let anything interrupt that. Help me that nothing will interrupt that. I want to meet with you. My friend, every praise that will worship is the only praise that will give up is for you. Every worship is for you. Every honor is for you. 